Hey there, FTB fam. This is Khalil with another video. Uh, we're going to take a look. Uh, it says here that King Charles III, he has an attraction towards Islam. Um, being a member of the royal family, it will be very interesting to see how uh, that kind of translates. Um, seeing that we know the, the, the monarch follows Catholicism like to the, the Catholicism, right? kicking off <laughs> all kinds of crusades and all kinds of things of that nature. So to see what this looks like will be extremely interesting um, to, to find out where this affinity uh, for the religion comes from, so on and so forth, all that wonderful stuff. All right, guys, let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, King Charles III's attraction towards Islam. Let's go. On the 8th of September, 2022, on the death of his mother, Elizabeth II, Queen of the United Kingdom, Prince Charles became King Charles III. Mm. I want to do a video discussing the remarkable appreciation King Charles has for Islam. I am not here to endorse or criticise the monarchy. I am just highlighting the refreshingly positive writings and statements about Islam made by the new king when he was Prince of Wales. I think it is a matter of considerable public interest to know these facts. Mm. In a speech entitled Islam and the West, given at the Oxford Centre for Islamic Studies, he said, and I quote, it is odd in many ways that misunderstandings between Islam and the West should persist. For what binds our two worlds together is so much more mm. powerful than that which divides That's us. It. Muslims, okay. Christians and Jews are all peoples of the book. And here Charles uses a Quranic expression. Islam mm. and Christianity share a common monotheistic vision, a belief in one God, in the transience of our earthly life, in our accountability for our actions, and in the assurance mm. of life to come. We share many key values in common, respect for knowledge, for justice, compassion towards mm. the poor and underprivileged, the importance mm. of family life, respect for parents. Honour thy father and mother is a Quranic mm. precept too. Ladies and gentlemen, Charles continues, if there is much mis misunderstanding in the West about the nature of Islam, there is also much ignorance about the debt our own culture and civilization owe to the Muslim world. Mm. It is a failure which stems, I think, from the straitjacket of history we have inherited. The medieval Islamic world, from Central Asia to the shores of the Atlantic, was a world where scholars and men of learning flourished. Yeah. They but because we have tended to see Islam to as the enemy of the West, as an alien mm. culture, society and system of belief, we have tended to ignore or erase its great relevance to our own history. Absolutely. For example, we have underestimated the importance of 800 years of Islamic society and culture in Spain between the 8th and the 15th centuries. The mm. contribution of Muslim Spain to the preservation of classical learning during the Dark Ages, that time of intellectual and cultural decline in the West, and to the first flowerings of the Renaissance has long been recognised. But Islamic Spain, said Charles, was much more than a mere larder where Hellenistic knowledge was kept for later consumption by the emerging Western world. Not only did Muslim Spain gather and preserve the intellectual mm. content of ancient Greek and Roman civilization, it also interpreted and expanded upon that civilization and made a vital contribution of its own in so many fields of human mm. endeavor. 
in science, astronomy, mathematics, algebra itself an Arabic word, law, history, medicine, pharmacology, optics, agriculture, architecture, theology, and music. Islam nurtured and preserved the quest for learning. In the words of the tradition, the ink of the scholar is more sacred mm. than the blood of the martyr. Cordoba mm. in the 10th century was by far the most civilized city of Europe. We know of lending libraries in Spain at the time King Alfred was making terrible blunders with the culinary arts in this country. It is said that the 400,000 volumes in its ruler's library amounted to more books than all the libraries of the rest wow. of Europe put together. Wow. That was made possible because the Muslim world acquired from China the skill of making paper more than 400 years before the rest of non-Muslim mm. Europe. Mm. Many of the traits on which modern Europe prides it itself came to it from Muslim Spain. Diplomacy, free trade, open borders, the techniques of academic research, of anthropology, etiquette, fashion, alternative medicine, mm. hospitals, all came mm. from this great city of cities. Medieval Islam was a religion of remarkable tolerance for its time. Now, this is an insight that Charles <laughs> makes, which is rarely appreciated in the West. Wow. I'm glad he is aware of it. Medieval Islam was a religion of remarkable tolerance for its time, he says, allowing Jews mm. and Christians the right to practice their inherited beliefs and setting an wow. example which was not, unfortunately, mm. copied it, for many centuries in the West. Mm. Mm. The surprise, ladies and gentlemen, is the extent to which Islam has been a part of Europe for so long. So Charles here is saying how crucial it is we understand Islam is a part of European history. It's not kind of an alien other from immigrants. It's part of the intrinsic mm. history of Europe itself. Just the fabric, yeah. Mm. First in Spain, he says, then in the Balkans, and the extent to which it has contributed so much towards the civilization which we all too think of wrongly as entirely Western, i.e., non Muslim. Mm. Islam is part of our past and present in all fields of human endeavor. Mm. It has helped create modern Europe. It is part of our own inheritance, not a thing apart. More than this, said Charles, Islam can teach us today. So he said, this is the future king saying what Islam can teach us as a non-Muslim mm. country, uh, England, Britain. Mm. Islam can teach us today a way of understanding and living in the world which Christianity itself is poorer for having lost at the heart mm. of Islam, and this is a great insight I, 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 that Charles is making, I think. At the heart of Islam is its preservation of an integral view of the universe. Islam refuses to separate man and nature, religion and science, mind and matter, and has preserved <laughs> a metaphysical and unified view of ourselves and the world around us. End quote. That's just a fraction of the speech, by the way. I'll, I'll link to it mm. in the description below. In, a, in another speech uh, at the Sacred Web Conference, now this is a Sufi Islamic kind of conference, which you can read online. Interestingly, he praised a book uh, by René Guénon, The Reign of Quantity. And here is uh, the book itself, uh, I do recommend it. Yes, um, now, he said about this book, intriguingly, many find this teaching difficult, the teaching of René Guénon, not least because he asks us to question our very mode of being, and perhaps because he asks us to question an, I an ideology in the form of mm. modernism that has become mm. so set in our minds that any other way of being seems in some sense fanciful and unrealistic." End quote. Now, what's mm. interesting 
Israeli Gaynon was a French Muslim convert. He was a mathematician, brilliant, brilliant man in Paris. He converted to Islam, moved to Cairo actually, and was uh, known as a traditionalist <coughs> Sufi. Charles clearly agrees with many aspects of his worldview. If you read the speech, you'll see other examples. He also quotes approvingly some of the works of Professor Syed Nasser. Syed Nasser is a very uh, prominent, uh, now American, uh, professor in uh, the States. He was originally Iranian, a uh, brilliant uh, individual. Also, mm. Martin Lings. Now, Martin Lings is very interesting, and I want to read a few lines from this book. It's called A Return, Return to the Spirit, Spirit, Questions and Answers by Martin Lings. It was published just after Martin Lings' death and contains some of his writings, plus a number of essays and appreciations by his admirers. One of these admirers just happens to be the King Charles III. Who was Martin Lings, by the way? Well, Martin Lings was an wow. English convert to Islam, uh, a very mm. well-known Sufi, um, and he was the author of a very famous book. And this is what Charles says in the, um, the introduction. Uh, it's under the official crest, Clarence House. Yeah, and he crazy. signed his name at the bottom, Charles. This is one sentence I want that's to read to you. So crazy. One of Martin Lings' greatest legacies was his remarkable biography of the prophet Muhammad. Now, this is the book in question. Now, I've done many, many videos reading chapter after chapter from this book, Muhammad, his life based on the earliest sources by Martin Lings. Many, many people consider this to be the greatest, mm. trans, uh, the greatest biography, Sira, of the Prophet Muhammad, upon whom be peace, in the English language. Not without its faults, upon but it is a beautiful peace, literary peace work be and I highly him. recommend oh, it. So does Prince Charles. He thinks it is an amazing book. So he's praising here a book uh, written by a prominent English Muslim about the last prophet sent to mankind, Muhammad, upon whom be peace. So that's what Prince Charles thinks about that it's book, which is remarkable. But just, but Martin Lings, as I say, was a convert to Islam. He, he died some time ago, uh, and a very prominent Sufi. So clearly, Charles is attracted to Sufism rather than other forms, uh, other expressions, I should say, of Islamic spirituality or teaching. Hmm. Now, just in conclusion, uh, to be clear, I am not saying King Charles is a closet Muslim. But he is yeah. clearly literate in some aspects of Islamic thought and metaphysics. This Absolutely. is unparalleled in the history of the British monarchy. Mm. I'm also not suggesting that Muslims as Muslims should back the new king. My intention in this yeah. video is simply to give a glimpse mm. of what he thinks about Islam. So Muslims in the UK can decide for themselves how best to engage King Charles mm. III in dialogue and discussion. Inshallah. Mm. Till next time. Okay, guys. Hey, let's just dive right into that. Um, okay. I really appreciate that. T to my good friend here, um, they just went right into uh, such a, I don't want to say prolific, but it was just such a well put together oration. Gosh, I'm failing for words. But he put himself, he put his thoughts together in just such a way that it was so palatable to the wise of um, King Charles being someone who can appreciate and understand the virtues that lie in in Islam, right? Sorry to put it in so many words, but like, I just really, really appreciate that. Furthermore, his reasoning, he's like, listen, to all the Muslims out there, understand where he's coming from and give the guy a chance because he's not coming to wipe us out he is saying that a strong part of our heritage and our culture as great britain also stems from um from um, ancient islam during the medieval times 
and and then continued to uh, reference uh, other examples of uh, writings um, uh, from authors by whom he um, himself just seems to be impressed with. And I think that's really nice. It was really good. That was that was, that was excellent. Absolutely excellent. Absolutely excellent. Really appreciated that. All right, guys, thanks so much for taking the time to enjoy that with me. Um, this was King Charles III's um, attraction uh, towards Islam. All right, this is Khalil signing out. You take care and be good. <laughs>